I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, October 3rd. Tesla has updated its U.S. website to add a cheaper Model Y rear-wheel drive with a base price of $43,990. After incentives, this makes it the cheapest Model Y ever available in the U.S. The new model kind of replaces the Model Y all-wheel drive, which was previously the cheapest trim at a base price of $47,740. The new model seems like it may be using Tesla's cheaper lithium iron phosphate cells. The batteries are cheaper and more durable than the common nickel manganese cobalt cells, but they have lower energy density and therefore less range for a given weight and volume ratio. Now, the new standard range Model Y is listed as having a range of 260 miles, as opposed to the previous all-wheel drive's so-called standard range, with a 279-mile score. Now, there are some additional changes. In addition, the new model has a 0-60 to time of 6.6 seconds, as opposed to the previous 5.0 seconds. It has a peak charging rate of 170 kilowatts, as compared to the 250 prior. Tesla has started to push a new software update that automatically activates and speeds up hazard lights after a crash. This is another great example of Tesla's extensive use of over-the-air software updates. As a matter of fact, most every other automaker has announced or adopted this practice for their upcoming vehicles, although the rollout for other car companies is not as swift as Tesla has already proven. We get a few looks at the Tesla Semi thanks to Jay Leno. We now learn that Tesla has built around 70 electric semi-trucks. Earlier this year, we had learned that Tesla only did about 30 based on the recall they had to issue, but it looks like things are going up. One of the biggest takeaways from the video is that Tesla confirmed that the Semi has replaced diesel trucks on its route to bring battery packs from Gigafactory Nevada to Fremont, which is a 260-mile trip. It's done so with the same load and the same route, proving that it can replace diesel trucks. We also learned that Tesla is using a drive inverter from the Cybertruck and a carbon wrap motor from the latest Model S and X for the Semi. We also get to see that the Semi has about 1,500 horsepower available, but Tesla curates that to customer-specific profiles for longer-lasting rides. The newly launched Powerwall 3 might be an indication that Tesla is finally going to be ready to bring bi-directional charging to their electric vehicles. Bi-directional charging is sometimes called vehicle-to-grid or vehicle-to-home or vehicle-to-load, and they're all just a way to refer to the electric vehicle's capacity for charging other things, not just to charge the vehicle itself. Now, when asked about this in the past, Tesla has mostly referred customers to their Powerwall product, which Tesla believes is a better product as it's always connected. But now, Ned Funnel, a charging solution architect, has had some interesting observations that could give us another indication that Tesla might be preparing to launch such a thing in their vehicles. The new charging expert noted that the newly launched Powerwall 3 has an upgraded power capacity of 11.5 kilowatts, and that's with a bi-directional charger. The capacity happens to be the same as the onboard chargers in the latest Tesla vehicles, except for the base Model 3. Now, it begs a question. Is it a coincidence that the new Powerwall 3 is using the same system as the onboard charger in Tesla vehicles? Could that also mean that they are bi-directional capable? We get some new details of the Cybertruck before the imminent launch. A short video was posted to the internet, which is a wonderful device if you've never heard of it. It shows the glimpse of the car's main interface and the interior. Now, the video doesn't seem to be taken by a Tesla employee. Perhaps it's a transport company or a worker with access to it and a cellular telephone device. The car starts off with a backup camera activated, showing the rear and side cameras, but there's still no all-around view camera, something that others have noted Tesla doesn't have. Now, moving through the rest of the car, there is a tray area between the front seats, much like the old Model S. Now, we don't see anything particularly new in the back seat, except for a massive glass roof, which seems quite expansive when looking from the inside. Now, also in a totally different video, we get to see a Cybertruck launching off of a stoplight line. Pretty fun stuff. General Motors has released its third quarter delivery numbers, and EV sales are plugging along, most notably with a huge increase in deliveries from GM's first Ultium vehicles. Now, it is a pretty big increase, but it's not a huge part of the total. The third quarter total was just over 20,000 EVs sold for General Motors. 
The lion's share was the Bolt EV and the Bolt EUV, which are not Ultium based. Those are representing 15,835 units. GM has struggled with the Ultium platform since the beginning, and the ramp up has been slower than many would have hoped. Ultium based vehicles have had pretty low sales, though it looks like it could be changing. In the third quarter, General Motors delivered 1,167 Hummers and 3,108 Cadillac Lyrics. Now, even though they haven't been publicly released, they also did 19 Blazer EVs and 18 Silverado EVs in the quarter. Now, while it seems great from our perspective of just talking about electric vehicles, we should note that this only represents 3% of General Motors' total sales. Four months after its public debut in Italy, Volvo has confirmed the targeted pricing for the compact EX30 SUV in the USA. As promised, the core trim for the single motor version starts at an MSRP of just below $35,000, excluding the destination fee. Now, while we don't have the details of the dual motor EX30's EPA range quite yet, Volvo has shared that the single motor variant will be able to go 275 miles on a single charge. Volvo says that it will share more details of the EX30's trim level and how they vary in the coming weeks. The Hyundai Ioniq 5's hot streak continues in the U.S., with sales of the electric SUV soaring 203% in the month of September, setting a new record. 3,958 units for the month. In the third quarter, Hyundai sold 11,665 of their Ioniq 5, making it a large section of the yearly tally, which represents 25,306 so far. Now, meanwhile, Hyundai's sister brand Kia didn't fare quite as well, but they did set a record in EV sales for September. Their sales had risen to 127% over last year, with the EV6 sales up 45% year over year, and they got 2,084 sold. A new trim level will make its debut in Ford's portfolio, the F-150 Lightning Flash. The new all-electric truck features a tech-focused interior and long-range capability, and Ford is calling it the correct value, and you'll see why. They say that the F-150 Flash hits the sweet spot for customers looking for an electric truck with modern features at the right value. The electric Flash has a tech-oriented interior, including a 15.5-inch touchscreen, premium sound system, intelligent access, and wireless charging. For a phone, that is. Now, these features are far from new in the industry, but what makes it special is the difference from the premium trim level, which includes many of these. The new Flash trim level will start at $69,995. This will make it eligible for the new EV tax credit provided by the Inflation Reduction Act. And the premium level truck does not qualify. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Steve M7065 says, Elmo Musk is a racist, and the board of Tesla should expel him. I'll never support Musk. Now, well, Steve, I don't really know what to say about that one. I do know that Elon Musk is called a lot of things. And ever since he threw himself into the political commentary ring, the accusations have only magnified. Really, it's not an enviable position for one of the richest, most powerful people in the world to be spearheading not only companies, but a whole movement of practical progress into lofty goals. All of this and simultaneously being under the microscope for what he says and does. If he wasn't crazy already, then circumstances would certainly make him crazy. The suspicion of other people's motivations, the worry that everyone's lying to feed their insatiable lust for money or influence. Yeah, I wouldn't want that for myself. Now, perhaps many years from now, this particular situation will have a clinical name, but for now, we just kind of call it the limelight. I'm sure many of you know the words of Neil Peart, who wrote about stardom, saying, quote, Cast in this unlikely role, ill-equipped to act with insufficient tact, one must put up barriers to keep oneself intact. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.